So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, thank you very much for joining and I'd like to seek your good wishes, your blessings, so that we can continue with the 10th Kato of the Srimad Bhagavatam Puran, uh, chapter number three. So we want to seek the blessings of Shri Radha and Krishna and um, Krishna Balaram and Gonitai, Guru Parampara, Srila Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj, so that we can um, enter into the nectar of the Bhagavatam. Of course, we're only doing a very quick overview, but uh, the nectar still is there. This is a verse uh, from this chapter, text number 46. Shri Shukra Vacha Iti Dharis Tusnim Bhagavan Atma Mayaya Pitro Sampas Yato Sadio Bahu 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 Bhuva Pakata Shishu Sukadev Goswami said, after thus instructing his father and mother, the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna, remained silent. In their presence, by his internal energy, he transformed himself into a small human being, small human child. In other words, he transformed himself into his original form, Krishna, Stu, Bhagavan, and so on. So we'll come to that later. A very, very important verse. So this chapter is entitled The Birth of Lord Krishna. Supreme Lord Krishna, Hari in his original form appeared as Vishnu so that his mother and father could understand that their son was the Supreme Lord. So at a appropriate time uh, for the appearance of the Lord, which was um, the entire universe was surcharged with all qualities of goodness, uh, beauty and peace, peace, the constellation Rohini appeared as did stars like Ashwini. In fact, this stars were not due to appear, but because the Lord appeared, they also appeared. They made everything auspicious. The Lord makes everything auspicious. The sun, the moon, and other stars and planets were very peaceful. All directions appeared extremely pleasing, and the stars twinkled in the cloudless sky. Decorated with um, towns, villages, mines, and pasturing grounds, the earth was all auspicious. Now we know the earth was actually uh, undergoing tribulation because of the saint, the uh, demoniac kings. Um, but at the time of the Lord's appearance, she was blossoming because uh, it was the Lord was appearing. The rivers flowed with uh, clear water, and the lakes and vast reservoirs were very beautiful. Birds like cuckoos and swarms of bees began chanting with sweet voices. A breeze began to blow, pleasing the sense of touch and bearing the aroma of flowers. The saints and Brahmins felt peace within the core of their hearts. Kettle drums simultaneously vibrated from the upper planetary systems. So this is all happening at this time when Lord appeared. Mother Devaki, being fully transcendental, Satchid Anand, does not belong to this material world because Devaki was of the same category as Sri Krishna. Thus, the Supreme Personality got it appeared with four hands from the heart of Devaki in the dense darkness of night, like the full moon rising on the eastern horizon. Upon seeing the Lord in that Vishnu form, Vasudev was struck with wonder. So he saw, this is what he saw now. He had wonderful lotus-like eyes. He bore in his forehands, this is the Vishnu form, the weapons, Shank, Chakra, Gada, Padma. On his chest was the mark of Srivatsa and on his neck, the brilliant Kastuba gem. Dressed in yellow, his body blackish like a dense cloud, his scattered hair fully grown, his helmet and earrings sparkling uncommonly with the valuable gem, Vaidurya. Decorated with a brilliant belt, armlets, bangles and other ornaments. So this is a little idea of the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. 
extraordinary appearing in this uh, in the prison house to ramachandra we know he appeared at midday in a palace <laughs> but krishna appeared in the middle of the night which is not considered auspicious and appeared in the prison house which is definitely not considered auspicious so there are important reasons why lord krishna appeared at midnight in a prison the darkness of night represents no ray of hope in this world. And the prison represents the shackles of Maya that hold us here. So the reason why Krishna appears in the prison in the middle of the night is he will come to give us hope. Our hope in this um, dark material world where we are bound by our karmic reactions. Because Krishna has come at a time when we need him the most in Kali Yuga. So he came in the middle of the night in the prison. So this year, Dinmashmi falls on uh, 30th of August. In the UK, it's uh, Bank Holiday Monday. So the Queen has very generously given us a, given us a day off on Sri Krishna Janmashtami. And he was born on Ashtami Tithi. And the Rohini Nakshatra was prevailing in the year 3228. Oh, that's probably wrong now. That probably should be uh, 5248, maybe. It's not sure. And Vishnu is a Prabhav Prakash expansion of Krishna. So we'll go into that uh, perhaps, not in this session, but another, another time. We've done that before. Um, basically, an expansion of an expansion of an expansion. We'll touch on it today. So in transcendental happiness, Vasudev mentally gave 10,000 cows in charity to the Brahmins. So sometimes we may be limited as to what we can do physically, but it doesn't stop us from doing it mentally. This is the beauty of Bhakti Yoga, especially in Kali Yuga. We can, even just thinking about a spiritual activity, derive the benefit of that activity. Don't actually even have to do it. <laughs> of course, if we do it, it's better. But uh, there may be circumstances where we are unable to perform bhakti. So uh, we can do it though mentally. So here Vasudev, he was in the prison. He couldn't actually donate anything, but he mentally donated 10,000 cows. Vasudev could understand that this was the supreme personality of God in Narayan. Having concluded this without a doubt, he became fearless. And after bowing down, he began to offer prayers to the child. So these are the, the, some of the cows. <laughs> and the lesson from that is that if it's ready. We can take this. Raji Vasudeva is in prison. How can he offer? Sorry? Raji Vasudeva is in prison, not outside. That's right. So he mentally offered it. He was just closed his eyes and he mentally offered 10,000 cows to the Brahmins. Mm. So that is, that is very good. In Kali Yuga, um, when we can't do something, we can do it mentally even. So, mm. and you get the same benefit as if you've done it. Yes, Raji. So, um, Okay, good. What should they have then offered? Uh, just one second. What should they have then offered prayers to the Lord? Uh, he addressed him as the Supreme Person, Parabrahma, the Super Soul, who is beyond duality and who is internally and externally all pervading. The Lord, the cause of all causes, is beyond material existence, although he is the creator of this world. So this is sometimes a little difficult to understand. He's creator, but he's also beyond it. He's not affected by it. He's not bound by the rules that he creates. When he enters this world as Paramatma, he's all-pervading. Andantara sta paraman jayantara stan govindam adi purusham tamaham Yet he is transcendentally situated. 
for the creation, maintenance, and annihilation of this material world, the Lord appeared as Gunavatas, Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwar. His form is transcendent to the three modes, material modes. Yet for the maintenance of the three worlds, he assumes the white color of Vishnu in goodness. For creation, which is surrounded by the quality of passion, he appears reddish. And at the end, when there's need for annihilation, which is, which is surrounded by ignorance, he appears blackish. Thus Vasudev offered prayers full of meaning to the Lord. So these are incredible prayers by the Vasudev in the prison. Then Devaki, it was her turn. She followed her husband by offering prayers describing the transcendental nature of the Lord. How everything emanates from him, being the cause of all causes. Fearing comes and seeking protection from the demoniac king, and also desiring that the Lord not be understood by atheistic and materialistic people. She prayed that the Lord withdraw her transcend his transcendental forearm form and appear like an ordinary child with two hands. So she begged the Lord, please hide yourself, please protect yourself, and don't make yourself visible to the crazy people around this world. <laughs> So this is um, a little idea. Uh, and we've talked through this, yeah. Then the Lord spoke. He gave instructions. He reminded Vasudev and Devaki of two other incarnations. Is it for Kapila Deva Hurti, there was a dev and Devaki, for them he born as Upendra Vamana. Yeah, that's very, very good. And before that, Prishni and Sutapa, they performed severe austerities and the Lord appeared at Prishni Garba. So we haven't uh, covered that uh, whilst going through the Bhagavatam. But as you said, very, very good. Uh, Aditya and Kashyap, to them appeared Lord Vamandev as dwarf, Upendra. So now for the third time, uh, he was appearing as the son of Devaki. The, the Lord showed his form of Vishnu just to remind them of his previous births. Otherwise, if he had appeared as a, like a whole ordinary human being, they would not have believed that the Supreme Personality of God, had, Vishnu, had indeed appeared. So that was the reason why he came in the four-handed form. Then the Lord transformed himself into baby Krishna, his original form. Krishna's two Bhagavan. So that's the worst that we read. And this is a little idea of uh, the sort of um, expansions and incarnations and avatars of Lord Krishna. So this is uh, Krishna's two Bhagavan. We've read that in the Bhagavatam, in the first canto, I think second chapter, uh, Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is also confirmed in the Brahma Samhita and many other scriptures. From him uh, expands Balaram, then the quadru first quadruple expansions, then comes Narayan from Shankarshan, then the second quadruple expansion of Vasudev, Sankarsan, Paduna, and then Aniruddha. And again from Sankarsan appears the three Vishnus. So this is when it, what it means by plenary expansions. These are all as powerful as Supreme Lord Krishna, but they're expansions of Krishna. So there's Karandakshaya Vishnu, Karbhadakshaya Vishnu, Shirodakshaya Vishnu. And Shirodakshaya Vishnu is the Lord who is Paramatma. He is uh, with everybody whilst we're in this material world. And he is the one that the demigods pray to uh, when they go to Shwetadvi. Uh, yes, not even. Yes, Prabhuji. Is it because of his plenary expansions that work on his behalf that Krishna is aloof and he sort of does not enter or touch into this material world? But all of them are the same. All of them, even uh, Shirodaksha Vidu Vishnu, although in this world, he's, uh, he's not connected to this world. Only when they want to connect, they connect uh, through the form of Shiva. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, they're all uh, of the same nature. They're, none of them are 
uh, directly connected with this material world because they're no different from Krishna. They're one and the same. Okay. But when the, when the Lord wants to uh, um, be in contact with this world, because he has to, he comes as Shiva, he transforms himself as Shiva. So the Lord then um, decided to leave the prison house of Kams. At that very time, Yogamaya took birth as the daughter of Yashoda. By the arrangement of Yogamaya, Vasudev was able to leave the prison house and save the child from the hands of Kams. So this is uh, some of the most, he, he actually directed Kams to take him to the house of Nand at Gorkul and uh, swap him with the baby girl. And Vasudev, what did he say? No, I can't do it because uh, I, I'm in prison. I've got shackles and there's guards. No, he didn't say that. What he said was, I will do what you want. So sometimes we may have this situation that you know we've been given a task to do. But if we have a positive attitude, like Vasudev, then anything is possible. Maybe a really hard task. Undoubtedly, it will be hard. But if we maintain that positive mood, then the Lord will help us, like he did here. So what happened? For Vasudev to be able to take Krishna out of the prison, three things happened. The shackles were broken, right? He was, there were shackles on his arms that were broken. The doorkeepers fell asleep, the guards, and the doors automatically opened. So three things happened. So if we have a positive attitude, these three things will happen to us as well. What are those three things? What are the lessons from those three things? First one, the shackles are broken. Our karma will be finished. If we are acting in devotional service, even it may be very difficult, challenging. Our karma will be finished if our if Krishna is in our heart. Do you have an issue? Ah, again. Okay. Now One I second. can hear. Now you can hear. Okay. One second. Let's check this out. No, should be okay now. Yeah, should be okay. So um, one thing that happens when we have faith, full faith in Krishna when we're acting, even if it may be challenging, is that our karma will be finished. The shackles will be broken from this world. Second thing is the doors of Maya, like lust and anger, they go to sleep. Like these guards have gone to sleep. So if we're fully into bhakti yoga, there's no question of lust and anger and greed entering into our world. Right? They go to sleep. And the third thing, the doors of the spiritual world open up. So this is if we have the mood of, of, uh, of Vasudev. Very important to grasp this concept. Because for us in this world, we have a negative mood, generally speaking. 60,000 thoughts go through our head every day, apparently. Most of them are negative. If somebody's done something to us, we are <laughs> constantly thinking about how to, how we hate them, <laughs> how we don't want anything to do with them, how we can get revenge. But if we have that sort of mood, then we're going to remain in this world. But if we're engaging in bhakti, we take a positive mood that positive mood will carry us through all the challenges. And there will be lots and lots of challenges because this is the material world. Uh, Nani Ben? Yes. You, yes, do you want to? No, no, that's okay. No, no, that's okay, that's okay. So then what happened? He left the uh, uh, prison house and who appeared? Anantashesh, always there to serve. This is the beauty of Anantashesh. Wherever the Lord comes, he's there to serve. But not just the Lord. If you see, his Anantashesh is also covering and protecting Vasudev as well. So this is, if one is uh, engaged in bhakti to Lord Krishna, Anantashesh will come and give protection. 
to the devotees as well. The night was very dark. As soon as Vasudev took Krishna on his lap and went out, he could see everything just as in the sunlight. So the lesson from the, where there is Krishna, there is no question of darkness. So try to remember the Lord all the time. This is what we try to endeavor to do in every circumstance, we remember the Lord. When Vasudev was carrying Krishna in the falling rain, Lord Shesha in the, fall, in the shape of a serpent spread his hood over the head of Vasudev so that he would not be hampered by the rainfall. So the lesson from that is Shesha is Lord Balaram who always serves Krishna. He serves Krishna in so many different ways. He becomes a paraphernalia which is offered to the Lord. He becomes the dham. Uh, there's nothing which is uh, not connected to Lord Shesh, Balaram, because he's simply serving Krishna. He wants to just serve Krishna. He loves Krishna. He's a, he's a supreme Lord, but he's a servant in the servitor mood. Vasudev came onto the banks of the Yamuna and saw the water of the Yamuna was roaring with waves. Still in that furious feature, the river parted to let Vasudev cross. So when we try to serve Krishna, he assists to serve him. He assists us to serve him in many ways. We just have to make the effort. He does the rest. <laughs> this is quite nice. We just have to make the effort. Like he said to Arjun, you just uh, do your duty and leave the rest to me. <laughs> okay. When Vasudev brought Krishna to the house of Nanda Maharaj, he saw that by Yoga Maya's arrangement, Yashoda, as well as everyone else, was deeply asleep. So Yashoda Maya was very tired after giving birth and she fell asleep, not even knowing whether the, she had given birth to a, a boy or a girl. So Vasudev exchanged the babies. He took Yoga Maya from Yashoda's lap and placed Krishna there instead. Then Vasudev returned to his own palace, having taken Yogamaya as his daughter. He placed Yogamaya on Devaki's bed and prepared to be a prisoner as before. In Gokul, Yashoda, she couldn't understand whether she'd given birth to a male or a female child. So this is just repeating a little bit. Uh, so this, this uh, act, which Vasudev did to swap the child, must have been one of the most difficult acts to perform. Such a huge sacrifice. He was giving up Krishna and taking up Maya. <laughs> Sometimes in life, great sacrifices have to be made. That was probably one of the greatest sacrifices, giving up Krishna. But he was ordered to do that by the Lord. And as uh, having a fatherly affection for the Lord, he wanted his protection away from comps. But sometimes we also may have to face some difficult decisions in our lives. So as long as we take shelter of the Supreme Lord, he will protect us and guide us through those difficult challenges. So we talked a little bit about uh, this point about um, this child here. This child here is Krishna. Because it's often said that Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. So how come he was born in Mathura, <laughs> which is not in Vrindavan? So when we did Damuda Lila, we went through this point and I was just thinking we could just uh, revise this again. In the maternity house of Nanda Maharaj, unseen by anyone, Vasudev exchanged his own son for the newly born daughter, Yogamaya of Yashoda, and thus returned with the girl to the jail in Mathura. When Kams got to know that the child destined to kill him had taken birth, he immediately rushed uh, to the prison to kill the child. 
But the girl in Devaki's arms was no ordinary child. She slipped away from Kamsi's grasp and assumed a celestial form, chided the king, disclosing that his child destined to kill him had already been born somewhere else. So this is actually chapter four. So the question is, had the child not taken birth in Mathura from Devaki's womb? So this is the point. Didn't Krishna actually be born? Wasn't he born in Mathura? Not according to Krishna's younger sister. So this is Yoga Maya. The Bhagavatam states that Yoga Maya had taken birth from Yashoda and she is the younger sister of Krishna. Thus Krishna was born to Yashoda and hence the well-known term Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. So the point is, this point here, which is where Yoga Maya says, your killer has already been born somewhere else. So the implication... Is Internet issue. Internet issue again. Is he still there? Yes, probably. Now he can hear. Okay. Okay. I tell you what, I'm going to switch to switch audio. I think you can join in again, Rajan Prabhuji. Can, can you hear me, me now? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. So the idea is Yoga Maya, she said to Kamps, your killer has Has already. Already internet issue. Internet issue. How about now? Now he's okay? Yes, probably. Okay. The idea is that Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. He was born already in Yashoda's place. So Yashoda gave birth to two children, not just Yoga Maya. She also gave birth to Krishna. Who was the child born to Devaki then? Right? Because Krishna was born to Devaki. He's regarded to be Vasudev, Vasudev Krishna, who, when brought to Gokul as Krishna's expansion, merged into the form of Yashoda's son. It is this expansion who leaves Vrindavan with a crew at the age of 11 and kills Kamps. The original Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. So the reference of this is Vishwana Chakravati Thakur. So the idea is Yashoda Mai, she gave birth not just to Yoga Maya, but also to baby Krishna, the original Swayam Bhagwan. And Devaki gave birth to It's very hard. That no one can uh, get uh, uh, get Krishna as their son. Yeah, it's not so easy. Especially Swayam Krishna, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. Have to be someone like Yashoda. And Yashoda is unique. Nobody can be like Yashoda. So, mm. why is it that Devaki is commonly known as mother of Krishna? The answer by Vishwana Chakravati Thakur is Devaki and Yashoda were friends. And Yashoda wanted Devaki to have the fame of being Krishna's mother. Yashoda means to give fame. So there's a little bit more. How did Yashoda and Devaki become mothers to the Lord? So this is the point which um, uh, Riyans just mentioned. Very difficult. So in the Bhagavatam, Sukadev Goswami explains, there's Drona and Dhara. They did huge tapasya. They um, wanted the Lord as their son. And Lord Brahma, he saw their tapasya and he gave, him that, gave them that blessing. Yes, let it be so. You will have the Lord as your son. Right. So they uh, they appeared in Vrindavan uh, as Nanda Maharaj and 
Yashoda. So Drona appeared as Nand Maharaj, Dara appeared as Yashoda. Thereafter, um, Parikshit Maharaj, Vaishnava, when the Supreme Personal Godhead became the son of Nand and Yashoda, they maintained continual. Parikshit Maharaj is so great. Because uh, uh, his uh, grandfather was uh, grandfather serving devotional serve, and in their can you hear me now? And in their association, uh, all the other inhabitants of Vrindavan developed the culture of Krishna Bhakti. Whilst the above two indicate the two demigods became Krishna's parents. So Drona and Dara were blessed by Brahma to become Krishna's parents. But that can't be. That can't be. Um, the position of Yashoda and uh, Nand are their eternal parents of Krishna. And it's explained that Drona and Dara, they are demigods. They did do they are expansions of Yashoda and Nanda. But only when Yashoda and Nanda came to this world, Drona and Dara merged into uh, Nanda and Yashoda. So there are contradictory statements. Two demigods were blessed to become Krishna's parents. But no one can become Krishna's parents because eternally Yashoda and Nanda are eternally the parents of Krishna. So there's two contradictory statements here. This statement here, 10, 9, 21, which we'll come across later, is that Krishna, the son of Yashoda, is accessible to devotees engaged in spontaneous devotional service. But he is not as easily accessible to mental speculators, to those striving for self-realization by severe austerities. So they did severe austerities. That's not how you can get Krishna as your pair, as your son. <laughs> so how do we, how is that explained? Um, so the Acharyas, Prabhupada, he explains, when Krishna descends anywhere, he's accompanied by his own associates. These associates are not ordinary living beings. Krishna's pastimes are eternal. When he descends, he comes with his associates. Therefore, Nanda and Yashoda our eternal father and mother of Krishna. This means that whenever Krishna descends, Nanda Nishoda as well as Vasudeva and Devaki also descend as Lord's father and mother. Their personalities are expansions of Krishna's body, personal body. They're not ordinary living beings. Before Krishna's appearance, Drona and Dara appeared in order to become his mother and father. It is they who appeared as Nanda, and Yashoda, in other words, it is not possible for a sadhana siddha, i.e. one who does austerities, uh, to become the mother and father of Krishna. For mother and father of Krishna are already designated. So very important to understand this. Um, also, continue, Prabhupada continues, because wherever Krishna appears on this world, he superficially needs a father and mother. So Dona and Dara his eternal mother and father appeared on earth before Krishna as Nanda Nishoda. In contrast to Sutapa and Krishna, they did not undergo severe of penances or austerities to become mother and father of Krishna. So this is the difference between Nitya Siddha and Sadhana Siddha. Regards the contradictions of demigods or not, uh, Jiva Goswami, he says in his book, uh, Bhakti Sandarbha, he reconciles this. Um, the first statement in the Bhagavatam must be taken in light of the second statement, which carries more weight. It should not be contradicted. So there's some rules of Vedanta Sutra which explain which statement is more important. And what Jiva Goswami is saying is the second statement in the ninth chapter of the tenth canto is more important. So Drona and Dara are partial expansions of Nand Maharaj, and they merged with um, Nand and Mara, Nand and Yashoda. Um, so Lord Brahma's blessing 
was actually fulfilling a prophecy rather than an independent boon. Lord Brahma cannot give the blessing that you can become the father and mother of Krishna. Because you already are, Nanda and Ishuda already are the father and mother of Krishna. So this is the point. Neither Brahma or Shiva, even the goddess of fortune, who is always the better half of the Supreme Lord, can obtain from the Supreme Personality world, the deliverer of, from this material world, such mercy as received by Mother Yashoda. So this is the, this is the proof of the statements. So the conclusion is, Yashoda and Nand are eternal parents of Krishna. Nand and Yashoda are partial expansions are the demigods Drona and Dara. And Drona is one of the eight Vasus, a great devotee of Vishnu, who rules a kingdom in heaven, but was, he was childless. So he went to have a child. Uh, he went to the Mandara mountain to seek the blessings of Brahma, there he did great tapasya. At that time, it was also time for Krishna to appear in Goku. So these timings co coincided. Yashoda and Nand took birth in, uh, descended into Goku. And at that same time, Drona and Dara entered the bodies of Nanda and Yashoda. So this is uh, quite interesting how uh, this is explained by our Acharya. Sanatana Goswami describes that just as Krishna's expansions merge with him or adjust themselves as required, the Gokul Vasis can similarly born as partial expansions or full expansions, or they can vary their appearance as per time, place, and circumstances. So when Brahma went to Gomatha, with Gomatha to petition the Lord to protect Dharma, Shirodakshai Vishnu instructed the demigods to appear in the family of the Yadus, Having received this order, Drona and Dara asked Brahma for the fulfillment of their desire to have the Lord as their child. So also Vasudev and Devati, they also are regarded to be eternal parents, just like Nanda and Yashoda. But they have a different mood from Nanda and Yashoda. Their mood is a little bit more formal. Uh, it's not as intimate as Nand and Yashoda's uh, attitude towards Krishna in parental love. So I won't go into too much detail about that. Uh, yes, Yashoda and Devaki are eternal parents of Vasudev Krishna in Mathura or Dwaka, whereas Nand and Yashoda are eternal parents of Krishna in Vrajdham. So there is a small difference between them because the mood and love of Yashoda is incomparable, uncomparable. Mm -hmm. Vasudev and Devaki could not enjoy Krishna's past, childhood pastimes, not just because they were in jail, but also their love was mixed with the knowledge of Krishna's divinity. It would have not been in place in Braja. So they would not have been able to fully appreciate Krishna's nature of, actually the childhood, childish nature of Krishna's pranks. So that's um, the end of chapter three of the 10th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. So uh, sorry, if, before we go to Madhusanpu, is there any questions or any comments? Anybody like to ask anything? Yes, it don't seem so. <laughs> Quite complicated, but seems to be made up beautifully by our yeah. acharyas, isn't it? It so is. I, it is. It yeah. is very complicated. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Because how, this is a secret. Nobody knows this. Nobody uh, knows. Yeah. Yeah. Acharyas have laid it out, you know. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So Devki and, uh, Devki and Vasudev. There are his eternal parents in the Dwarka and uh, Mathura. In Mathura. And then Absolutely. Bruna and Dara, they are the partial expansions and they merge into the Yeshoda and the Nanda Baba. Fantastic, Nani Ben. Thank you so much. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. And Nanda Yeshoda's mood is, yeah. Yeah. you know, the childish pranks, Krishna. 
he wouldn't have done those childhood pranks with um, Devaki and Vasudev. In fact, when he first met Devaki and Vasudev after, in the prison after he freed them, um, he, he, uh, he cried, he, he cried with them. He cried and he said, I'm sorry, I didn't do my duty as your son to protect you. <laughs> but with Yashoda, it was never that mood, you know, the mood was completely different. Playful, surely. <laughs> Devakin Vasudev knew that he was he was uh, he was the uh, Bhagwan, isn't it? When they appeared, so they didn't forget that. And, no. Uh, Yashoda never knew that, isn't it? Yeah, and even when he got a glimpse, she, like, Lord, perhaps. she, yeah, she, it was more the Lord didn't want her to know because it would have spoiled her yes. uh, mood of bhakti, you know. Mm -hmm. oh. But with the Yash Vasudev and Devaki, even beforehand, they would be always aware of the status of Krishna, even before he appeared as four-handed. Um, but Nanda and Yashoda, they would always pray to Vishnu to protect Krishna. <laughs> so their, their mood was completely opposite. <laughs> okay. No, thank you for that, Nandiman. You've uh, understood it well. Thank you. It's very mesmerizing, you know, all these activities going on. You're trying to mm. uh, yeah. uh, understand or comprehend. It's a challenge. Yeah. It is. And I uh, have to thank uh, Shivaram Maharaj because uh, he's uh, laid this all out in his book, uh, Jan the, um, Yashoda, uh, no, what's it called? Damodar Janani, I think it is, something like that. Yeah. Very, very nice book. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, okay, Mother Sun Babu, yes, go for it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so, uh, but this chapter in the purport also, you know, the purports are so powerful. Mm. When uh, Prabhupada is explaining about how um, the, the, the demoniac kings like Kunz was performing so many atrocities and um, and then Krishna says, I, there are two reasons why Krishna comes. One of the reasons is to annihilate the demon. Um, and, and that is made, made clear as well by Prabhupada explaining how even when this uh, Sankitan movement in ISKCON has been established, but it could quite easily be, you know, opposed by demoniac natures, you know. So <laughs> it is uh, it is actually an incarnation. So Lord has appeared in Kali Yuga um, in his Nam Rupa, Nam form, you know. So the Mahamantra is actually the incarnation of the Supreme Lord with all these paraphernalia and everything is within that mantra. But it's difficult for us to understand, but only through Lord Chaitanya that we would understand that, you know, uh, by Lord Chaitanya's mercy. Um, so, uh, okay, I'll go to the instruction. So chapter three, then the prayers of Vasudev and Devaki are followed by Krishna explaining why he chooses them as his transcendental parents previously as well. So he's explained why due to their austerities and tapasyas and their previous lives is appeared as Vamandev and Kapil. And so he explains all that. Krishna gives um, the reasons why. And also when, when he's sent to um, Vrindavan, Vrindavan, there's this totally different mood. And there, they don't even think of Krishna as a Supreme Lord. If they did, then they <laughs> It would be different, you know, if you suddenly, it's like having a, some friend who you know, is a very good friend of yours, and suddenly you find that he's actually maybe a billionaire or something like that. You, you, your mood was changed completely towards him, you know. You tr start treating him differently. Mm -hmm. um, and then they would associate with, your association with them would become different as well. So it's just a bit like that, but here it's in transcendental mood, you know. So Prabhupada instructs us, that the Lord deals with his devotees exactly like a human being, but this does not mean that the Lord is one of the human beings. 
So mm. this is the conclusion of non-devotees. Avajananti mm. mamamuja manasyam ashritam. So the non-devotees just will think, like Kansu will think, oh, Krishna is just another human being. He's here, you know, just to fight with me, try to kill me and all that. He's worried about his life and all that. So devotees know the Supreme Lord personality of Godhead under any circumstances. So Devaki and Vasudeva knew that this is the Supreme Lord who's appeared in front of us. They would know at, under any kind of circumstances, whether it's a prison or whether it's... But this is the difference between a devotee and a non-devotee. Devotees would immediately know. So like in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, some of the very close associates knew that this mm. Lord Chaitanya is a Supreme Lord himself. Mm. But not mm. everybody would know. You know, everybody would treat him like, oh, he's, he's a madman, gone crazy. What's he doing chanting Hare Krishna and all that? So they would treat him like that, but only the close associate. So devotees would recognize um, the Supreme Lord, but the non-devotees, you know, but by the mercy of uh, the Acharyas and the, by the mercy of Prabhupada, and we are able to understand a little bit because it's Lord Chaitanya's mercy flowing towards us. And that's why we're able to understand it. The Lord says, so engage your mind always in thinking of me. Become my devotee on offer basis and to worship. So by just constantly, uh, even in your mind, like Riyanshu was trying to ask, he's wondering how can Vasudev, who's being in prison, donate so many cows. But there was a situation when I was in the Middle East and I didn't have any paraphernalia or anything to offer any worship or deities or, deities or anything like that. But I would just do it in my mind. I would just think that oh, I'm in front of my deity at home. I would just offer flowerings or whatever I feel in my mind. I would sometimes you have to do it in your mind, but that Lord accepts that, you know. So um, yeah, that's that's a Mansi Puja, you know. So in this chapter, it becomes clear the relationship of Devaki and Yasoda with Krishna. In Vrindavan, Krishna is not regarded as the Supreme Lord. So that's the difference, you know, Devaki had the tinge of sort of thinking, he's still like Narayan, you know, Supreme Lord, or so there's a mood, there's a difference, and you can totally be like Yeshua, the man who is, would never think that this Krishna is my Lord. If, he, if she did, she would just faint anyway half the time, because she saw a little bit of pastime later on when, she, when he opens her mouth and she sees this wonder and she just collapses. What's she doing? In her? But anyway, thank you very much. Any more? We lost it or what? Yeah, I think now.